welcome back to our global audience. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, and against all odds, the world saw a venture capital boom. VC deals grew by 46% in 2021, recording levels comparable to the dot-com boom of the 1990s. What's more, VC has become more inclusive, with Africa and Latin America and the Caribbean witnessing the strongest VC growth. But the VC outlook for 2022 and 2023 is more sober, as we show in the new Global Innovation Index. Venture capital is starting to dry up, leaving us to wonder what impact this will have on new startups and business ventures. Today, my guest is Cecilia Zhao, a venture and growth investor at Kinevik Capital, a 5 billion plus publicly listed company known for backing companies that you will all know, Zalando, Cleo, and Travel Perk. In addition to her investment work, Cecilia has a strong social media presence with more than 1 million followers and is also a best-selling author. Let me turn to you, Cecilia. Welcome um, to our show today. It's great to have you. Thank you for having me, Zach. Let me start with the first question. Um, you know, as I alluded to in my intro, our data tells us some sort of a venture capital boom and bust scenario up until 2021, and then um, more of a bust possibly uh, up and coming. Is this, um, you know, in your experience and from your experience on the ground, uh, reality, right? Are our data telling us the, the reality? In short, yes. 2021 saw a record in VC funding with startups around the world pulling over 750 billion, according to Deal Room, right? That's more than double the amount from 2020 and 50% more than what we saw in 2022. So what really happened? Well, 2021 was a year of high liquidity and valuation. As we know, this was largely due to an environment of sustained low interest rate, which made safer asset classes like bonds less appealing. As a result, a notable shift occurred where capital gravitated towards more risky asset classes like early stage startups. So this influx was amplified by government-led fiscal stimulus as responses to the pandemic which naturally boosted the capital availability across many economies. And the accumulation of these factors, a surplus of disposable capital, the diminishing attractiveness of traditional investment avenues, and an overall market optimism, especially for tech, led to a scenario where we observed a tendency for deals to be overvalued. So it wasn't rare in like 2021 to see deals being done at 100 times ARR. Now, transitioning into 2022, it felt like a period of recalibration and heightened macroeconomic instability. So this is what this was a year that was marked by rising inflation, climbing interest rates, and geopolitical turmoil. As a result of this, VC started to tell their portfolio companies a new message from the previous growth at all costs to profitability over growth. So the idea was to ensure that their companies having, have enough runway before funding conditions and the macro environments improve again. So interestingly, not all sectors were also impacted equally. So climate tech, for example, remained an active investment focus for a lot of VCs in 2022. Now, lastly, touching on 2023, we saw many investors turning into generative AI as the next frontier of investments. Many good quality businesses have also reached a healthier margin profile and are now reshifting their focus to growth again. So I'd expect the VC environment to remain healthy as some companies grow into their valuation over the next 12 months to 18 months or so at the growth stage, whilst disruptive technology offers more interesting opportunities in the very early stage. Excellent. Uh, that's extremely interesting, and I appreciate um, that green tech is still uh, flourishing in terms of VC-backed investment. Would be a pity if not. And also, you mentioned uh, new fields of AI research. Uh, on in some, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, you don't seem overly worried. I think there's still enough activity going around, but in general, the trend has quieted down. But nothing to be incredibly over worried about. Excellent. Now, I know uh, that you are actually uh, most active on the European venture capital and investment market. Um, what is the situation in Europe? Is it paralleling uh, the global data with boom and bust that I mentioned? 
Is the European market any different? Uh, tell us from your daily work. Yeah, really happy to share my observations today. So when we look at the last kind of 12 to 18 months, there's a clear dip in both the accounts and the funding amounts, right? But it's not uniform across boards. So sectors like fintech, software, and healthcare, they're still the top destinations for European VCs. And then you have countries like the UK, Germany, France, and Nordic still receiving most amount of VC funding. But I think what's really interesting is that given European has quite a fragmented market, many startups from day one have to think about how to go global, which contrasts with places like China, the US or India, where companies themselves can make venture style returns by just focusing on their domestic markets. Interesting, yes. What is the latest deal that you have worked on that you can talk about publicly? And uh, you know, what are the main lessons learned uh, in terms of new trends uh, in innovation finance, but also maybe new tech trends. Yeah, no, I'm actually really excited to share the one of the most exciting deals I've worked on recently is called Embedded Biosciences. Embedded is a tech bio company that uses AI to uncover the medicinal qualities in plants. And this is obviously a naturally exciting opportunity considering that many successful drugs like aspirin have their origins in nature. However, the existing approaches have really struggled to tap into nature's full potential due to limited insights into nature's chemical structures. So Emeda stands out in this challenge by harnessing advanced machine learning, large language models, metabolomics, and robotics. So their comprehensive IP protected platform is already capturing significant interest in the pharma world. And addressing the kind of your latter part of the question, I've always believed in the potential of accelerating the drug discovery process, the potential of increasing the probability of success of certain programs with biotech platforms. And given the ongoing strides in technology, particularly with generative AI, I anticipate the sector will continue to attract a large amount of VC funding going forward. Excellent. And I, I like the fact that you chose a biotech or health tech sort of company and not a IT or social media. Um, investments which uh, you know most people of course focus on um, so thanks for this maybe a, a, um, a very last question Cecilia if you have time um, and that is uh, beyond being a VC investor uh, you have a strong social media presence I'm hearing more than 1 million followers uh, in China uh, mostly focused on you know consumer trends and uh, what works and, and what's not based on, on this experience you know, what are the new um, consumer trends that you see um, emerging in China? And to what extent do consumer preferences or consumers as such uh, have a bigger weight in China possibly on the market than um, in other world regions? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I found that Chinese consumer preferences tend to be identified more quickly and responded to with the greater speed in China. And I think there's several reasons for this. So first off, let's talk about China's tech ecosystem. It's incredibly integrated, making their response time quite rapid. Big players like Tencent and Alibaba have built platforms that tie together everything from social media and marketplaces to payments. So when there is a new trend or preference emerging among the Chinese consumers, it's quickly scaled and fed back into the platform. Now this not only refines the user experiences, but also gives a very comprehensive view of what the consumers really want. And then there's the power of the creator economy in China where Livestream is a major player here. So to give you a sense, Livestream alone shopping in 2022 saw transactions worth half a trillion dollars. The way how it works, right, is influencers showcase their products live and the real-time feedback from viewers then shapes product trends. So this immediate feedback loop really ensures that market stays nimble and adaptive. But I think a word of caution is that with the rapid pace of consumer trends in China, it can sometimes give rise to short-lived trends. So in such a dynamic digital landscape, trends can be burnt pretty bright, but also burnt out quite fast. So it's a challenge for both investors and companies to sift through and discern what's a lasting trend from what's just a passing fad. Yeah, so it's a, it's a very dynamic market, one that is um, you know, quite hard to follow. So. We'll make sure we, um, we check your posts regularly. Uh, look, um, Cecilia, this is the end of our interview. Uh, I want to uh, thank you uh, from WIPO and myself uh, for um, telling us about the new VC trends and also the new tech trends. And hope to see you again soon in person. 
Roy, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks everyone for joining us for this interesting discussion about the recent state of innovation finance. Thanks also to our data partner, Refinitiv, for, for making the VC data available uh, to the Global Innovation Index every year. See you soon. Mm -hmm.